Yeah, it feels great. It feels awesome. I mean, our guys are fired up and our fans are fired up. I mean, uh, a normal camp, which is which is great. Our normal schedule, it feels really good to be to be back into it. Coach, the first time we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of three down linemen uh, with two outside backers. Uh, are you guys transitioning to a full three four this fall, or is it going to be a little bit more uh, more multiple, more based on uh, deep, or offensive personnel? Correct. So we just we, we need to be, do some things a little bit differently. And so one of our off-season studies was how we can play the run a little bit better than we did last year and be able to get some three big bodies up front. That will be based a little bit on the personnel. You're correct. Mm -hmm. Stadium's not as full as it, as it will be. Soon. What's that? I'm sorry. Obviously, the stadium's not as full as it will be soon. But it was, it, you know, fun, a little bit of energy to get some people in the stands. Yeah. Anytime we have an open practice and there's fans, that always helps the energy. Our guys, our guys love that. And it's really great that Coach Lake is doing that. That that helps. There's no doubt. We had nobody here last year. That's for sure. With, with using the extra down linemen, how have you seen like Fatui to Italian and Bandes and some of those guys that are going to be working for those roles? How have you seen them grow and, and what's the next step for those guys? Yeah, they're all growing. Um, yeah, I always. The next step is just continue to improve. I mean, I always hate to say just one thing. They got to strike blockers uh, aggressively and violently. They need to get escape off blockers. Uh, when it is first and ten, and they got big personal in the game, but it's pass. You got to transition to to pass. So it's 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 excuse me, it's improving in everything that they that they do. But I do think those guys are really good young players, and they are improving every day. There's no doubt. Coach, the defense you're running, how complex and how difficult is it to really these young guys to understand? I don't. I don't. Th I think we need to be simple. I think when guys play their best, it's it's simple. But we give them enough in their toolbox so they can they can play fast. But it certainly isn't this big complex defense where guys can't execute. I don't know if we've had a major major bust yet in camp, and we have we have a lot of calls in. The guys are doing um, a really nice nice job. What we try to do is. Conceptually, same as, same as, same as. What that means is, is you, whatever eight guys are same as, and you rest the guys are a little bit different. And so we try to keep things as simple as we can. Well, with the, the safeties, they, they rotated in and out last all spring. You could almost tell, couldn't tell who the starters were, mm -hmm. even though you know who the you know, guys who have starting experience. How did you set, uh, set it up coming in? Did you just grade the whole spring and then say, these are the guys that will start first and hang on to the jobs? And, or, and you know, are you rotating them quite a bit? Yeah, we're still rotating. Um, there's no jobs that are set in stone right now. Obviously, we got some older guys that are uh, a little bit ahead of the younger guys, and we and camp is the time for all those guys to compete and to get better. And um, we we don't necessarily have uh, that. You guys get these many plays. You guys get these many. The older guys will get a little bit more than some of the younger guys. But we try to keep everybody rotating in through camp. Coach, I know it's early in camp, but you know when you've gone back and reviewed practice film who's put a smile on your face that's really stepped up so far uh boy a lot of guys it's it's great to have trent mcduffie and Kyler gordon out there and uh you know trent was a little bit ding in the spring and he's a he's a really special special player in what he does on the field uh old veteran i think ryan bowman has been here for 17 years and it's great to see that guy playing and playing fast um eddie olfashio um Quao, as a young guy, he's doing really, really well as a young as a young player. Um, yeah, I feel uh, Buki, Buki, our transfer uh, from Oklahoma, he's a good transfer. Uh, so there's a lot of guys that are putting smiles on my face right now. Mentioning uh, Buki, what does he bring, both in his ability, but also it seems like in his energy and his leadership? What is, what's kind of the total package with him? You said it. Yeah, I think he has great experience. Obviously, he comes from a good program. Um, but he certain, certainly didn't come in here like he knew it all. I mean, this guy is hungry to learn. Uh, he was on the field the other day before camp all by himself, taking some mental reps, running around. He is hungry to learn. He's a really fits in great here. You, you'd think this guy is going on his fourth year here. So he does have great leadership. He loves football. He's got a passion for the game, and he's a playmaker. How are you feeling about your, your depth at linebacker with the, a couple guys leaving the program here? Yeah, if we keep everybody healthy, I feel good. You mentioned Pejova. Just what has he done in, I know, coming in the spring and now to be able to sort of just separate himself and, and, and show you that he's maybe ahead of where you might have expected? Yeah, I mean, we don't have a lot of young guys that on the defensive line, which is a very physical position, as you guys know, um, that has played at his, 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 at his level. It's a little bit hard to do that. And he came in here um, mature, 
I think the biggest thing over the years I find is if guys can are just emotionally ready, and he certainly was emotionally ready to play at, play at this level, and he's, he's physically gifted as well. And so he was not overwhelmed uh, by coming here in the spring, and he, he fit in really, really well. He seems to have a uh, right kind of attitude for it. I've seen him not taking anything from anybody out there. No, he, he certainly um, does not back down. No. Can you kind of walk us through the process with Zion's rehab and your first thought that he might be able to come back and now it looks like he's definitely coming back and just kind of the process? Of you I, haven't, I haven't heard that snooze to me. Uh, I don't know if he's, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, honestly, I, I just, I, the guys are on the field right now. I mean, I, I think he's ahead of his schedule, what I understand. I think Zoe is ahead of his schedule, but I think that's down the road a little bit. I mean, if we get those two kids back, I'll be happy, but I know we're not going to have them first game. And so uh, I do think those guys are doing great. And if they're back, great. But I'm not totally involved in that. I'm not down the training room, the rehab process. So. He had a Julius Irvin in camp. What are you looking to take the next step? Yeah. I think his, Julius is a really physical kid. He's very passionate about football as well. I, I think just total understanding of the defense. I think he still needs to take a step. Just, hey, I, I feel really comfortable in what I'm doing. And he's more reacting as opposed to thinking. But Cam, you got two interceptions today. Who, who's that? Cam Williams, yeah. two interceptions today, just obviously yeah. flashed a lot. But just what have you seen from him as well? Yeah, I think I think the same same deal. I think both those guys are really good safeties, and they need to probably just take a step. They, they're not afraid of anything, and they practice hard. They're going to hit you. I think it's just becoming very comfortable and being able to react defensively. What are you expecting from Danny Hamill this fall? Yeah, Daniel has taken a, a major step, and uh, he has had three really good practices in a row. Um, He's a physical player. He's reacting much better. Um, I feel good about Daniel right now. Anything else for Coach? Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Eddie, just how do you feel like, you know, kind of as a, a leader in this group, the defense has come out in the first three practices in terms of energy, execution, and all that kind of stuff? I think in the first three practices, we've been very uh, aggressive, We're, like playing really fast and really comfortable with uh, everybody on the field. And I like the fact that like we can just like rotate random people in. Like sometimes I'm in with like me, Shad Nichols, sometimes it's Bookie. And I just feel like completely comfortable and like trust that he can like make those keys and uh, make those calls. So it, it's been pretty, it's been pretty nice so far. What is it about Bookie that made him able to ingratiate himself just almost like that in the defense? You know, it's weird because it, it really feels like Bookie was in my, like, my class, like the second like he got here. So it's just like, from the, like the very get go, he was always like, he didn't like distance himself. He really tried to like to be a part of this group and part of this family. So it was just easy for him to do that. And he also wanted to just be great. So I'd say that it was just, it was easy for that because that's all we wanted to be. We wanted to be great. He wanted to be great. So it just it was just a great match. Eddie, you've obviously been here for a couple of years. When you look at the group that you have out there right now and, and that, that group of guys, just how do you feel like this group compares to previous groups in terms of talent, athleticism, what you guys are capable of? Is how would you compare this defense to last I think, you know, we have the potential to be a great defense. You know, we have, like, speed in the perimeters. We have great D tackles, and we have very, very talented outside backers. But, I mean, that's talent, you know. Now, now the job is to do it and to maximize our potential, right? So... You know, I like where we're at, but it, we just have to work. You know, it's all about the work. Can you talk about the chemistry with you and Jackson both out there at the same time? Oh, yeah. It's like <laughs> me and Jack kind of like think the same thing at the same time. So it's like he doesn't even have to like tell me something I'm already thinking. So is this because like we watch so much film, we talk football so much, and we always ask each other questions on, oh, if this were to happen, what would we do? Oh, I think I'd do this. Okay, if you do this, then I'm gonna do this. So it kind of like there's some place where we don't even like speak, and we're like we're passing off people, even though we're really not supposed to. But like it's just because we just have like it's kind of like twins. Like we just have like the same thinking sometimes. Is it different when they rotate guys in and you get somebody else next to you? Uh, not really, because, uh, you know, working, working with Dan and working with June, I've been with June for like the same time as uh, Jack, so it's kind of like the same thing, and Dan, like, Dan's made like tremendous leaps, and I always talk to him about like what we would do, so it's always, it's always pretty smooth. What is, what is Daniel so much better at? I mean, Coach Gregory said the same thing, that, that he's made some pretty big leaps recently. Man, it's just like his intelligence to the game has increased tremendously, and that allows him to use his tools, his strengths more efficiently. 
So like him knowing where like where the next rim is going to be, uh, like play action keys, just allows him to play faster and allows him to be like a better player. Connection with with Jackson. Did you guys have that since just showing up on campus together? Just how long has that? Bond yeah, started? yeah, we were we were <laughs> we were roommates, and the funny thing is. It, me and MJ were supposed to be roommates, but it ended up being me and Jackson. So we lived with each other for like, I think around like six to eight months and really got to know each other. So it's just, it's always, we've always been close. And uh, we're always looking for the young guys that are really ready to play because it seems to indicate they're going to be really good. Mm -hmm. And Pejolfa seems to have come in and just uh, had no limitations on him. And he has a, seems like a, a, the proper attitude to be a defensive lineman. Yeah. Could you talk about him a little bit? Yeah. I mean, Literally the second he came in during winter workouts, like you can just tell he had a different mindset than a lot of freshmen that come in, you know? It's just like, he's just, you know, a grinder. He always wants to do extra stuff. Uh, Saturdays when we're working out on the field, you know, he's also there, like working, you know, and he's always asking questions. And you can tell that he, he wants to be a, like a good player and that he really cares about his craft. So you always appreciate that in a freshman. And he's got that one little extra, like, uh, uh, kind of, the anger management thing, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys need up front. Of course, yeah. You got to. That's why you got to let them, you got to let them be free sometimes just to do their thing. Having Coach Gregory as a DC, does that make your job kind of freer and easier just to kind of play the defense from a structural standpoint? Is there any difference there? Uh, I don't think, I mean, yeah. Yeah, because we're doing some things schematically that just clears up like the whole conversation and makes uh, a lot more things uh, understandable. So it allows all our all of our guys to play faster. What was it like having some people in the stands today that create a little bit extra energy? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we had them in the spring, so I, I probably would say like I was more excited in the spring, but it just, it, it feels normal. It feels good to be back and, you know, I'm glad it's 2021 and not 2020, so. Hey, with um, Trent and Kyler back there, I mean, Trent's just elite. Mm -hmm. With their ability to keep on guys, does that free you up to do some things differently that you don't have to worry about as much? Oh, yeah, it just makes me, like, focus on my job because I know that, like, if it's a pass, I'm like, well, I'm chilling because <laughs> cause I got great corners and great safeties behind me, so I can really just, like, feel confident and comfortable doing my pass drops and stuff, so. Tom Hampton, mm -hmm. he looks a little bit more like a linebacker than <laughs> yeah. safety. So yeah. it's a little bit different size back there. What's that thing? Uh, I don't want to get his head too big, but yeah, he's a man. He's just like a was a freak specimen, and you know, like he's my roommate. And literally every time I get home, he's like sitting there watching film, asking me questions. Like literally last night, he woke me up in the middle of the night saying. Like, just asking me some random football question, and I was like, yep, I answered the question. So he's always trying to learn and be a better safety. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just so excited for him. Is that annoying when you're in, like, a dead sleep and you get... You know, at this point, knowing that what we wanted to accomplish, I, I just kind of let it go and accept it. But, you know, I'm going to wake him up eventually, so... Jimmy said that uh, ZTF is going to play this regular season. Do you guys have an office pool on what day, what, what weekend he's coming back? I mean, I have, I have no. You gotta ask him. That's a, you gotta ask Zon, and you gotta ask uh, Lake. That's a, that's a late question. An Oregon weekend, and, you know, that would be a good yeah. milestone. But I don't know what his Achilles is gonna let him do. Yeah. So. Well, I haven't followed his his treatment routine, and you know, I kind of like letting people have their processes. So I haven't really been bugging him about it. All right. Anything else, Brett? Go on. How does, how does this camp compare to your first five? Uh, you know, as, as you get older, camp is more fun every year. Because when you're a young guy, you're thinking like, oh, man, I can't wait to get home and play Xbox. Or I can't wait to get home and just chill. And it's like every year you get older, you just accept the fact that football is what you do. And it's like, this is your fun time. Like, this is when you chill is when you're watching film or yada, yada. So every year just gets a lot more fun, honestly. And this being, you know, my six or I don't even, yeah, six, it's just super fun to hang out all day with everybody on the team, the coaches. It's just a totally different mentality and environment to be in.
So it's it's just a fun time, just because you're really hanging out with your friends all day, just playing football. So it's like, what's there not to like about that? I would guess you kind of have settled at a, a good frame because you've been at that sort of 280 range for a while yeah. now. How do you feel different physically, or just how do you feel physically now compared to either the spring or last year? Just how's that growth? Yeah, I mean, I've always fluctuated a ton in terms of weight. I've been light. I've been super heavy. And uh, basically right now I'm just focusing on being as explosive and as strong as possible because with what they're asking me to do here at UW, that would be the most important thing. So just focusing on focusing on explosiveness, speed, strength. I know if I do those three things the best, then there's not going to be a whole lot that could stop me. So. Just focus on that. I know my weight fluctuates a lot. Um, so whatever I feel most comfortable at is where I'll be staying at during the season. Um, it could be like 280, 275, 270, somewhere around that range. Just whatever I feel the best at. You, you've kind of been a standard as a starter, obviously, throughout the first three practices, unsurprisingly. But I know that they're working in guys opposite you, whether it's Braylon yep. today or Savelle or Cooper. Just what is your sense about those young guys coming through and, and what and how ready they are, I guess, to, for that for that moment? Yeah, those three dudes are super hard workers, and they've improved every year that they've been here. Um, so it's like Coach Malloy really wants to see all those dudes throughout camp, show, see what they put on film, you know, see what how good their technique is, how good they acclimate to coaching. Um, so. Basically, for Malloy, it's him just looking at those dudes and seeing who, who the guy is going to be because he's looking for a next guy. And all three of those dudes, they have the, they ha they're capable of being that guy. So right now, early in uh, camp, <clears throat> it's pretty much just looking at consistency, technique, aggressiveness, like style of play. And all those dudes are putting good stuff on film. So, I mean, it's going to be a hard decision for Malloy, obviously, what, what guy he's going to go with there. Um, but the, to tell you guys, all three of those dudes are, are really good, uh, and they'd get better every day, and it's only day three. So probably in a couple weeks, you know, that'll be a different conversation. But right now it's like he's looking at those three guys, and they're all really good. So it's just day-to-day -day basis what they can do. How do you feel about your defensive front? Last year when you guys started the short season, you know, you, you uh, lost Tuli right off the bat. Levi opted out. Uh, Latu got injured. Um, all of a sudden, you had a—I think you were down to like a third unit guy starting when the season started. And then they there's a lot of rush yards uh, in some of those games. How do you feel about it now since these guys are a little more experienced? Tuli's back. Um, you know, ZTF's going to come back. It's yeah. Fine. Honestly, I'm not concerned about it at all. I know with the last two games that were played last season, a lot of people's concerns were the run. Um, I know the guys that we have, and I know the young guys that we have at, at the defensive line. And the, you got Taki and Thule, who are both back and, and fine. Um, and the young guys are super hard workers, which is, you know, you don't usually see that every year. You know, being a, a college guy, guys come in and it's like freshmen or freshmen. But the group of guys that they have in the D-line, the young guys, they know how to work and they're, they're talented guys. Uh, so I, I really honestly have no concern about being able to stop the run at all. I know there was a little... It was a little iffy last season, but there was, you know, a lot of stuff going on on the D line. There, I mean, outside backers, we're, like, we're losing guys, injuries, whatnot. So, but look, moving forward, I I wouldn't even be concerned about that at all. Does it make you smile when you see a guy like Payhova lose his temper out there? Like freshman, true freshman, I don't think usually do that, but I've seen him do it now in spring and fall, and I'm thinking, oh, I like that. We definitely like it. I know the coaches don't want us to like it. But, I mean, energy is energy, and you're, we're always going to feed off of that. So we definitely want dudes to have poise and, you know, not get us a penalty or something. But if we're in camp, it's like we want to see that. We, we like that energy. You know, we want guys to be pissed. Like, we want guys to be having fun because that's, like, all it's about. But when it comes to game time, we for sure got to learn how to be poised and, you know, because they're going to catch the second dude that throws a punch or whatever it is. So, I mean... It's only day three. Dudes are probably going to be pretty pissed moving forward the next week and a half. But I think around week two, guys will be a lot more composed and have their stuff together. Uh, but we do like to see it. Ryan, you've been here a long time, and you've gone up against some really good offensive linemen in your time here. How good are the guys that you go against every day? And who do you really have to tighten it up for because he just gives you fits? 
Uh, they're pretty good. Uh, they're fun to go against. Honestly, it's weird. We we don't even really think about them like that, though. Uh, we study their sets and study their techniques, and it's like whatever dude that it is, we're not even really going to be thinking about it. But it's like, okay, Jackson Kirkland's right there. It's like, okay, I know that he sets this certain way. I know that he likes to do this with his inside hand. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to change my game up that way. But I mean, if I really had to say like who I'd, I really have to like focus on, it'd be Jackson for sure. Mainly because I don't really rush as much from the right side. Um, so if I was going to think like, it'd be like, oh yeah, Jackson, all right, I got to tap in real quick to my keys and know how he sets, know what hand he likes to use and just read him more effectively than some of the other guys. Some other guys, you just, you just go, you know, and do your thing. But, you know, guys like Jackson, you got to actually think more and be like, okay, I got to play the mind game. And Jackson, he's got a different body type than the guy next to him. Yeah. How, how's it different going up against MJ with that kind of size? Well, it's like, is MJ and Henry Bynavalu are huge? Like, they're just massive. They're like 330. And Jackson, he's pretty big now. He's like 320, maybe 315. But he's he's a lot, he's more athletic. He's got really good feet. Those two guys are, MJ and uh, Biney are very athletic too. It's just they're a different style of offensive lineman. But with Jackson, he's got really good feet. So it's like you really got to play the mind game. You know, with, with some of the other guys, you can get away with like finesse and athletic ability. But some dudes, you really have to have the mind game. Pro Football Focus uh, is really enamored with your defense. They've crunched all these numbers and they've called you a top five defense with the Alabamas and I can't remember who the other four were, Cincinnati, I think. Um, I know you can't live off that, but do you get you feel that it's a high compliment when you hear something like that? For sure. I mean, uh, yeah, we love all the compliments, but honestly, we're not even paying attention to them because what Coach Lake preaches, it's like ignore the noise. So it's like people are going to say good stuff, people are going to say bad stuff. There's always going to be haters and there's always going to be lovers. So it's like... We're just going to keep thinking about this. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, we're just going to think about this stuff in here. We're not, we're like, guys are going to give compliments. Guys are going to hate. It's just what it is, what it is. So, I mean, of course, seeing the PFF stuff, you're like, oh, all right. But then you got to quickly just shut that out and be like, I'm back to work here. I'm not focused on anything outside the building. Just if you didn't hear that at all, it'd be a, a problem. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I mean, we know we're good, though. So it's like, all right, we're good. You know. What's the development of Smell Small has looked like over the past year where you kind of got thrown into the fire last year a yeah. bit uh, compared to the, just the spring and now into, into the fall year or two for him? Yeah, so that was a, he's just a great kid, you know, and he, he's, uh, he's really screwed his head on his shoulders tight. He's really a smart, mature dude, and he comes to work every day. So honestly, I'm very excited about his future as a dog because I could see it, you know, the potential and the ability that he has and the aggressiveness that he plays with. Um, so like, yeah, it's it's exciting for me because I got Coop, Braylon, and Savelle on the other side, and I know any one of them could pop off any second and be great because they all have the potential to be great. Um, but in Savelle's case, it's like he's really matured a ton and he works super hard and he loves the game of football. So it's like practicing with dudes like that, that's just like how Zion is. You know, it's just like practicing with guys like that, it makes the game way more fun. So, and then everybody feeds off that energy. Guys are locked in, but also like jokey. You know, like we mess around, but we're locked in though at the same time because football uh, it just makes it a lot more fun for everybody else. All right, thank you guys. Eddie was talking a little bit about this, but just how has your guys' sort of bond grown over time in terms of knowing how each other's thinking, knowing how each other is playing and reading things? Just how has that sort of grown over the years being here? It's just been kind of a steady thing. You know, we came in uh, together, me, June, Eddie, and uh, Ben. We're all, we're all good friends, know each other really well. Eddie and I roomed together freshman year. And I've just been super tight ever since. And so just taking, taking rep after rep after rep uh, on the field, you kind of just figure each other out and then hanging out after practice, hanging out at the dorms, hanging out, you know, just, just on the weekends, all that stuff. You know, you, you get to learn each other. So it's just been kind of a constant, steady uh, process. Yeah, you pointed out that this 
with Gregory being the DC, everything's kind of just eased up a little bit. How much have you seen it be different this fall compared to last year? There's some things different. I mean, it's <clears throat> it's a lot with the like the Coach Peterson, and Coach Lake transition. You know, there's a ton of carryover. There's some things here and there that have kind of been tweaked. Um, you know, similar attitude. We're gonna stop the run. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna play solid defense. Get after the get after the quarterback. But uh, you know, there's been some scheme kind of tweaks here and there. But a lot of it, there's been a ton of carryover, and and we're gonna. It's been good. It's been a good transition. How comforting is that? You know, speaking of the bond with Eddie, when you're next to him and you know, even without speaking at times, okay, I'm seeing this the same way that he is. It's great. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the time. Uh, you're still talking either way just because you want to get in that habit and you want to you know just be able to talk and communicate without even thinking about it you know, it just comes naturally but there are times where you know you you don't got to say anything and you know he's going to get it he knows i'm going to get it and uh you know when that happens uh it makes it a lot a lot cleaner it's good you made kind of a quick entry into the starting lineup for a typical five-year plan at this level is this what you envisioned when you came here is to be like a starter this quick i mean it was everyone wants it you know everyone hopes that'll go that way uh i came here and i just wanted to play football you know i didn't care if i was fourth third what first whatever i wanted to come in and just play football and get better every day and that's what i've you know just continue to work on that every single day and wherever i am that's where i am you know everyone wants to be in the in the starting lineup but ultimately, you know, it doesn't matter that much. Like, you gotta have the same, same mindset. Like, I think my mindset's the same as when I got here the first day. If not, it's better. You know, there's no, you don't take it easy. You don't get complacent. Uh, just trying to just improve every day, just a little bit at a time, and it, it, it builds up over time. Can you have, uh, played with, for your dad, or, or do you need separation when that football comes? That's a funny question. Um, no, I mean, he's, I'm super tight with him. He's awesome. Uh, you know, there's some things that just don't, it just don't happen. It's not planned. It's not, you know, like I need a separation or anything. He'd be an amazing guy to play for. And I'm sure all the, you know, all the guys down there love playing for him. But, you know, some things just don't work out. And that's just kind of what happened. How different are you now from where you were a year ago? Where have you seen the most improvement in your game? I'd like to think I'm a lot different. Um, I think I've just been trying to get the details down. Um, you know, schematically, I feel like I'm, I'm, I've been very comfortable, but just, you know, getting a little craftier, getting the details of that, just working on that day in and day out, just a couple things here and there to help, you know, just get me over that, get me over the hump and uh, make an extra play here and there. I think, I think that's what I've improved on. You come from a football background, you know what I mean? You with all your family and everything. With your football IQ coming in, that probably gave you a little bit of a head start. Was it a detriment in any way? Um, you know, I I don't think football IQ is ever like a detriment. I think I'm, you know, I'm not the smartest dude out there, but you know, I'm, I, 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 I like to think that I know what's going on. I can pick things up quick. Um, my big struggle is I've, I've always been a little bit of an overthinker. So just letting loose and playing fast and making quick decisions, that's something that I'm really trying to hone in on. And uh, that's, that's, that's something that my entire life, you know, football or life, that's going to be something that I work on, you know, not overanalyzing stuff. So. Speaking of working on the details, was part of that writing down notes and did that go into the pen thing that you looked into or wound up doing with NIO? Sorry, say that again? The, the pen deal that you had for NIL. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was a total joke. That was a total joke. How much fun did you have just kind of with, once, once that opportunity came, there's the opportunities and things like that. How much fun can you have with that? Oh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to have a ton. I'm not really focused on any NIL stuff. You know, off season, anybody's out there, sure. But, you know, right now we're focused on football. The pen thing, that was just a joke. I'd seen a bunch of people posting stuff about, you know, if, if you want to endorse me, you know, I'm here. So I just thought it was, it was a funny joke. Everybody's got a pen. Everybody's got to write stuff. So I just, yeah, exactly. Just posted something stupid. 
so now that you're a starter for a couple of years, if you had a 54-yard fumble return, would you score on it now? You know, uh, this is to Miles Bryant, if he sees this. He was telling me the whole time I was good, and he was right behind me, and uh, I give him crap all the time. He should have, you know, you got to peel it off and kind of give him the guy a little bump, but uh, yeah, I'm scoring. All right. Thanks, everybody.